Hello friends, welcome everyone. Namaste. And uh, thank you all for joining today. Today is March 14th. And it's our daylight saving time that begins here in the East Coast. So we are meeting like an hour earlier, but actually this is our daylight saving time. So um, here we are. And spring is not very far. You can already feel the... the the spring in the air, but uh, March 20th is coming soon. And uh, that's when we'll have our March spring equinox. And that's when our spring begins. And next Sunday, we will not have a regular class here because we have yoga therapy retreat. That is our whole day yoga going on from morning eight till evening five o'clock. So next Sunday, keep that in mind, but we'll be sending an email about that too. So let's begin everyone. Sit comfortably and keep, what that means is that keep your spine straight. So don't slouch, keep your shoulders rounded back. And we're going to begin with a deep breath. So let's begin, take a deep breath in and lift both your hands up above your head. Now, initially, you will notice that your elbows are slightly bent, but then slowly you can straighten your arms. Feel the stretch on your spine as you do that. Very nice. Hold it here. We try to hold a posture for a count of five. So five, four, three, two, one. And slowly bring your hands down. And as you bring your hands down, try to bring your elbows together. Yeah, hold it here for a few seconds, holding your elbows together. And if they don't touch each other, that's okay. Listen to the, your comfort level. And now relax your elbows, bring your hands to your heart center. And relax. So remember the rule of thumb is to listen to your body. And what does that mean? That means that you should have effortless breathing. That means that you're not huffing and puffing during entire yoga session. So you know that when you're doing it within your comfort level. And the other thing is so you're listening to uh, your body by being aware of your breath. And no point you should be feeling pain during the entire session. Yoga is ouchless practice, no ouch, right? So always listen to, to your, your body and you can do that when you're doing it with full awareness by being totally present here. So when you are on this mat, this is what we call our magic carpet. So on this magic carpet, when you are here, you're totally present with yourself. Very good. Let's do some spinal twists. So we are trying to first warm up our body. So put your right hand over your left knee, put your left hand behind. Keep your spine straight, breathe in. And as you breathe out, slowly turn your body, upper body to the left. So you're turning your chest to the left. Feel that stretch on your lower back. And it feels really great. And relax. Shake it, catch your breath. Now with your left hand, you put your left hand on your right knee, put your right hand behind, keep your spine straight, breathe in. And as you breathe out, slowly turn your chest to the right. So you're turning your upper body to the right. Looking, it's like you're looking over your right shoulder. Hold it, feel the, the spinal twist. You can feel it on your lower back, on your spine, in your abdomen. And slowly relax, face front. Catch your breath. Today we are going to do yogic jogging. We haven't done that um, in the last couple of Sundays. 
So you're going to first get on your four limbs. And what that means, this is our tabletop position. So your hands are right under your shoulder joint. Your knees are right under your hip joint. So you're not keeping your hand too much to the front or too much behind. Same thing with your knee. Don't move your leg too much to the front or too much in the back. Just right below the shoulder joint. And we're going to put our body weight on both our hands and our left leg. And we're going to lift our right leg at the level of our vertebral column. So breathe in. And as you breathe out, lift your right leg at the level of your spine, at the level of your vertebral column. Hold it there. And once you see that your body has stabilized, that means it's not wobbly, it is not shaky, then you can slowly see if you can lift your left arm and lift it up at the level of your shoulder joint. So hold it here and relax. Bring your hand and your leg back. And now let's do the same thing on the other side. So again, stabilize the position. Normal breathing. And now you're going to put your body weight on your right leg. And we're going to lift our left leg up. Breathe in. And lift your left leg again at the level of your spine. Stretch your leg pointing your toes away from the body. And once your body has stabilized, see if you can lift your right arm at the level of your shoulder joint. So it's a, you can feel it, your right arm is stretched, your left leg is stretched, hold it, you're stabilizing the body, the body is in balance, and then slowly bring your hand down and your leg down. Now we are back in the tabletop position. Now we will do the cat pose and the cow pose. So you're going to first breathe in and breathe out. And now when you breathe in, you're going to curve your back. So you're going to round your back. Breathe in, rounding your back like a cat. And breathe out, drop your chest down and look straight ahead. Breathe in, drop your head down. You're going to round your back, pulling your belly in and breathe out, dropping your chest down and looking straight ahead. Now slowly bring your hips down towards your feet and slide your arms away from the body. Feel that full stretch of the body. And slowly you can bring your head down to the mat. It's a powerful stretch. You can slowly move your hands and bring them towards your feet. You are curled up like a child. Now get back to the tabletop position and put your right foot towards your right hand and then lift your left leg, put your left foot towards your left hand and slowly slide your hands up your leg, up your body and relax. Very good. Shake it. We are ready to do our warm up. So we have already started with the sitting postures, we are already doing the warm up. We are trying to relax our muscles, relax our ligaments and joints so that we can then dive into yogic posture. So let's begin with the spot walking. So in your own spot, very nice. Let's do spot walking, everyone. I see you all doing that. Yes. Spot walking. Great. So, so what we are doing is yogic jogging. It consists of 12 steps. So this is step one. Step two is swinging your arms. So swing your arms and allow your heels to kind of touch towards to your hips. 
but don't hit yourself too hard. Just doing it gently. Step two, relax. Step three is hands at the waist and bring your legs towards your hands. So you can start low and then slowly you can lift your hands up further up. Look at that. I see some of you, your hands are up here and your knees are going all the way up. That's awesome. And if your knees are going here, that is also awesome. Why? Because your body is awesome. The fact you are, that you are here, you are taking care of your health, that is awesome. All right, relax. And slowly you can always raise the bar, right? And keep your thighs slightly at an angle. Don't point your knees to the front. Your knees are slightly at an angle. And relax. Change it, catch your breath. Now we'll do standing squats, so hands at your waist. Uh, yes. So don't keep your fingers in the front. Keep your thumb in the front and your fingers are pointing back for support, right? Your feet are shoulder width apart and feet are slightly at an angle, not facing the front, not pointing to the front, slightly at an angle. Breathe in and as you breathe out, you will bend your knee and it's like you're sitting on an imaginary chair. So this is a standing squat. You can feel the pressure on your thighs. You can feel it on your, on your shins, on your ankle, and keep your spine straight. Sometimes we have a tendency to lean forward, but slowly you will notice that you can keep your spine straight while your knees are bent. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly come back up and relax. So that was our standing squat. So now you're going to bring a little more distance between your legs and we will do some lateral squats and lateral bends and side bends. So put both your arms in the front, stretch them. Okay, and then now slowly turn to, turn to the right side. Breathe in and as you breathe out, bend your right knee. Look straight ahead, parallel to your hands, so your gaze is parallel to your hands. You can feel the stretch on your left leg, you can feel the pressure on the right thigh and your right leg where you're bending. And bring your hands to the center, drop them down. And now we are going to get ready to do the other side. So again, stretch your arms in the front. Turn to the left side now, breathe in. And as you breathe out, you're going to bend your left knee, keep your right leg straight and look straight ahead. Your gaze is parallel to your hands. Feel the stretch in your right leg. Feel the pressure on the left leg when you're bending. Hold it. And relax. Bring your hands to the center, drop them down. Catch your breath. Very good. Now we'll do a lateral bend. So you're going to put your hands on the side, turn your feet to the right side. So you're, you're turning your body to the right, looking on the right side. And if you, it's like if you draw a line from the heel of your right foot, it will go towards the center of your left foot. So your left foot is slightly at an angle. All right, breathe in. And as you breathe out, bend your right knee. Feel the pressure now on your left leg. You can feel the stretch in your left leg all the way. You might notice that your left heel is going up. Slowly, you can bring your left heel down. Look straight ahead. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Face front. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. So now point your feet to the left. Your body's turned to the left, breathe in. And as you breathe out, bend your left knee. Feel the stretch now on your right leg. Feel the pressure on the left leg when you're bending, hold it here. And relax, face front. Drop your hands down. So we did some side bends, lateral bends. Now we're going to do something very similar to triangle pose that we do. And it's also a side bend. Breathe in. 
And as you breathe out, slide your right hand down your right leg while lifting your left arm up, if you can. And slowly turning to the right side. And just hold it here. And relax. Shake it. Catch your breath. So when you're doing these side turns, this is how you are massaging your abdominal organs. So now we're going to do the other side. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, slide your left hand down your left leg, lifting your right arm up and hold it here. You can feel the stretch on the right side of your abdomen. You can feel the pressure on the left side of your abdomen where you are bending. And relax. Shake it, catch your breath. Very good. <coughs> now we will do the chest opening pose. So keep the distance between your feet and we will do this powerful chest opening pose. It opens up the heart center. So you bring your hands to the front, breathe in. And as you breathe out, open your arms wide, pushing your chest forward. And if you don't have any neck problems, you can tilt your head back to look up towards the ceiling. You're welcoming the universe. You are ready to take on. And relax. Bring your hands to the front, drop them down, shake it, catch your breath. So that was a chest opening pose. Now we will do up and down. So we are going to take our hands up and bend backward. And then when we bring our hands down towards the ground, we're going to bend forward. But remember, if you have severe back problems, do not do forward bend. And if you have hernia, do not do any back bends. So breathe in, both hands up, and you're going to bend slightly back and breathe out forward. Drop your hands down towards the ground. Again, breathe in, hands up, bend back, breathe out, hands down, bending forward. So just do it a couple more times at your own pace. And coordinate it with your breath. And when you keep doing it, you will notice that later when you can come down, you can even go down all the way. You can even bring your head down. But all in stages. And relax. Shake it. Catch your breath. Very good. Now we will do crisscross. Very good. It's like a brain gym exercise. So it brings balance between the left brain and the right brain. So you're, with your right hand, you're going to touch your left foot, then come back. Then with your left hand, you're going to touch your right foot and bring your hands up above your head. So just do it alternately a few times. And if you need to bend your knee, you can bend your knee. And if your hand doesn't reach your toe, that's, that's fine. If your hand is up here, you just stay there. Like I said earlier, listen to your body. Last round. And relax. Shake it, catch your breath. And bring your legs together. And now we're going to do jumping jacks. We will do low impact. So stretch your arms at the shoulder level and your legs apart. Bring your feet together, hands together above your head. So shoulder down, shoulder up. Yes, just do it at your own pace. It's just like a PE exercise. Now we're going to change to just up and down. So you're going to move your hands up, legs apart, down, legs together. Up, legs apart, down, legs together, yeah. So just do it again at your own pace. Yeah, I see some of you are ramping it up. That's great. You can always do like this. So again, 
You can jab it up. It's all up to you. Last round. And now swing your arms side to side. Just let it go. Swinging the arms side to side. These are your spaghetti arms. Like cooked spaghetti. Very soft. Malleable. And you're just swinging side to side. Letting go. Very nice. Powerful spinal twist as well. And it helps to relax the body. So shake it. Catch your breath. Very good. Now let's do some standing postures. So let's start with the card asana. So your feet are again together, interlacing your fingers. You're going to lift, flip your hands and stretch them. Lift them above your head. Feel the full stretch of your body. This is called the mountain pose, Start asana. Hold it here. Feel the stretch. And once your body is stable, slowly see if you can lift your heels up like a ballerina reaching for the stars. So now you're standing on your toes. Your heels are lifted up. Hold it. And relax. Bring your heels down and bring your hands down. Shake it. Catch your breath. Very good. So that was Tarasan, mountain pose. Now we will do a variation of this. So you're going to put your right hand over your left shoulder and put your left arm behind your back like this. So you're folding your left arm behind your back. Breathe in and your feet are shoulder width apart. Breathe in and as you breathe out, you're going to again turn your chest to the left. Feel that stretch on your back and slowly face front, bring your hands down. Shake it, left hand over the right shoulder, your left, your right arm goes behind your back, breathe in. And as you breathe out, slowly turn to the right side. And relax, face front, drop your hands down, shake it, catch your breath. Now we'll do the triangle pose, Trikonasan, very good. A triangle a day keeps the doctor away because it massages our pancreas, spleen, liver, intestines. So spread your legs apart. Again, about four feet apart. Spread your arms at the shoulder level. Turn your right foot to the right. Look on the right side, breathe in. And as you breathe out, you're going to first bend your right knee, rest your right elbow on your right thigh while your left hand is pointing to the ceiling. And you can tilt your head to look up towards the ceiling. Stay there, and once you're comfortable in this posture, you can try to straighten your right knee and then slide your hand down to your right ankle. So you're doing it in stages. And slowly relax. Face front, drop your hands down, point your foot to the front. So again, do it in stages. And if you're more comfortable with just resting your elbow on the thigh, you just do that. So again, like Patanjali, the father of modern yoga says, everything in time. So do, uh, do take the time and there should be ease in a posture, very important. If you're not at ease, you're not doing yoga. So it has to be comfortable and at ease. You need to be doing it at ease. Again, stretch your arms at the shoulder level, turn your left foot to the left, look on the left side, breathe in. And as you breathe out, bend your left knee, resting your left elbow on your left thigh, your right hand is pointing towards the ceiling. And you stay here, if you're comfortable with this, and then slowly, for those of you who have been doing it for a while, you can stretch your right left knee and slide your hand down towards your ankle and look towards the ceiling. So this is a sideways bend. You know, it is like if there is a glass wall in front of you and there's a glass wall right behind you and you are trapped in the center. You're the only way you can turn is sideways. That's what you're doing. So you're not leaning forward. You're not bending back or leaning back. Staying here. And relax. Bring your hands 
to the shoulder level, drop them down, turn your left foot to the front. Now, keeping the distance between your legs, we are going to do Kati Chakrasan. This is a spinal twist, powerful spinal twist, recommended for people who have diabetes because it massages the pancreas. So bring your arms to the front. Your hands are parallel to each other. Keep your gaze parallel to your hands. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, keeping the gaze parallel to your hand, you're going to turn to the right. You're turning your upper body to the right, all the way back. And slowly in the outgoing breath, you're going to bring your hands to the center. Breathe in, in the center, and breathe out to the other side. And slowly come back. Let's do it one more time. Do it at your own pace. And relax. When you finish your round, you can relax. So this is how you're working on building your stamina, your strength, your flexibility. You are building stronger muscles and, of course, stronger bones and joints. And, of course, you will have lower risk of falls as you do that. So shake it, catch your breath. Very good. Bring your legs together. And now we will do the, the handshake behind. You might need a towel or a yoga belt if you have. So, uh, like, I brought a towel here today. So the way, because this is the, the handshake behind that we do. So the way you do that is, first, let's just do the simple version. So you're going to stretch your arms at the shoulder level, and then you're going to turn your palms facing back. So your palms are now facing back, yes? And now slowly you're going to drop your hands down. And as you're bringing your hands down, you're going to bring them behind your back and hold your hands. So with your right hand, you're trying to hold your left elbow. With your left hand, you're trying to hold your right elbow. So you stand here like this. And then slowly you can put your right foot forward. And then lift your right heel up. And then if you are stable and you think that you've got a good hold, you can slowly lift your leg up. So you're incorporating balancing pose also. Then bring the right foot back, catch your breath. Let's do then the same thing with the left leg. So put your left foot forward, lift your left heel up, and slowly you can lift your foot up. So incorporating balance in the body, especially as we grow older, it's important to build that stability in, and balance in the body. Then bring it back. And now very slowly and carefully, you're going to let go of the grip and you're going to slowly drop your hands down, shake it, catch your breath. Now we will do the handshake. And for which you might you will need that belt, yoga belt, or a towel if you have. So what you're doing is you're going to hold it in your left hand, and then you're going to raise your left hand up and then drop it, bend it backward. So you're bending your left hand back, dropping the elbow, I mean the towel back, and now with your right hand, you're going to grab hold of the towel and slowly inch your way up. Because what is your target? The target is for the two hands to shake each other. So that you are doing a handshake behind your back. So your right hand is handshaking your left hand. So here, this is one way to do it. So you are holding it tightly with your left hand and with your right hand, you are inching your way up. And you can feel the stretch on your shoulder joint and your shoulder blades. Now relax, let go, shake it, catch your breath. Now we do the same thing on the other side. So again, now what you're going to do is holding the towel, you're going to raise your right hand up, then slowly bend your right arm. 
And now take your left hand behind and you're going to grab the towel and try to reach your right hand with your left hand. And slowly relax, let go. This is powerful. This is how you're building your immunity because you're activating these lymph nodes that are right here in your, uh, there's a cluster of uh, those nodes uh, at your armpits. So it is how, this is how you're massaging. You can feel the stretch in your armpits when you do that. Very good. So now we are going to sit down, but we are going to sit down with in Sukhasan posture. So see if you can slowly sit down like this. Now, initially it is a little bit hard, but with practice we'll be able to sit down like this. Initially you will notice that your heels are lifted up and that's fine. That's where you are, so stay there. And then, in, then later you'll be able to bring your heels down. Now stay here. This is Malasana, powerful asana. And with your arms, upper arms, you are pushing your knees outward. So stay there. And now turn your neck. So you're turning your head to the right. And then face front. Then turn your head to the left. And face front. One more time. Now, let's see if we can stand up again. This is what we'll be doing in the yoga retreat. Part of the yoga retreat is this, you know, just standing up and then slowly sitting down. Okay, relax. And now you can sit comfortably, stretching your legs in front of you and putting your hands behind. We'll do the light exercises called Sukshma Vyayam. So these light exercises are uh, the nourishment for all of our joints, all the major joints in the body, all the major joints, ligaments, muscles you are doing, you are activating when you do that. So starting with your feet, wiggle your toes, wiggle, 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 move your toes, and then maybe you can, yeah, you can see it. So keeping your spine straight. So this is our uh, Prarambhik Sthiti or the start position. And then move your toes. Then curl them inward towards the body. Breathe in. Push the balls of your feet outward. Your toes are pointing inward towards the body. And then breathe out. Pointing your toes away from the body. Just the toes. This keeps our joints healthy. So that you won't have any arthritis problems. So again, breathe in, move the toes towards the body, breathe out, away from the body. Now point your feet towards the body. So push the heels outward. So now my heels are pointing outward and my entire foot is now pointing towards the body. And as you do that, you can feel the stretch on the underside of your legs. Now point your feet away from the body. Both your, so you're working on the ankle joint now. One more time, breathe in, move the feet towards the body, push the heels outward, breathe out and point your feet away from the body and relax. And now move your feet side to side, right to left, left to right. This is like the wipers of a car. So you're moving the wipers, right to left, left to right. We can go slow, intermittent wipers, then you can even move it a little faster if it's raining heavier. All right, relax, shake it, catch your breath. And now roll your feet around in a circle. So you're working still on the ankle joint. You know, it is one of the major joints is our ankle joint. So taking good care of your ankle joint will go a long way. Literally, you can go a long way when you have healthy feet. Now do it in the counterclockwise direction, in the opposite direction. Very good. And relax. Now bring shoulder width distance between your feet and turn your toes towards each other. So it's like it's an angular movement. It's like you are holding this imaginary beach ball between your toes. Hold it 
and you can feel it. It's affecting fascia, the connective tissue as well, when you do this angular movement. Because normally in our day-to-day -day life lifestyle, we don't do this movement. And relax, shake it, catch your breath, spread your legs further apart with your right hand, reach for the left foot, come back with your left hand, reach for the right foot. So just do it at your own pace. And if you need to bend your knee, you can bend your knee, but you're bending your body at the waist. Last round. And relax. Now bringing your legs together, interlacing your hands, we'll do the grinding wheel, the Chakki Chalanasan. The important part is to keep your arms straight. Don't bend your elbows. So keeping them straight, breathe in. And it's a circular movement. Lean back, bring your hands towards the body and breathe out pointing it to the front. So it's a circle you are making with your hands. It's like you are rowing a boat. So breathe in as you lean back and breathe out when your body comes to front. So you can feel the pressure in your belly. This is recommended also to people with diabetes, but also to people who have problems with digestion, with bowel movement, with elimination. Last round, now do counterclockwise in the opposite direction. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in as the body goes back and breathe out when the body goes to front. Last round. And relax. Come back to start position, hands behind your back, keep your spine straight, shake your feet, Shake your legs, catch your breath. Very good. Now we will do the knees. So press your kneecaps down. Feel the tightness. As you're pressing the knees down, hold it. Feel the, feel the tightness. So your quads, your hamstring, your thigh muscles are tight when you press your kneecaps down. Hold it, hold it, hold it, and relax. Shake it. Catch your breath. Fold your right leg. So interlacing your hands, you're going to hold your right thigh and lift your right foot up and stretch it, straighten it up and down. And when you bring it down, don't rest it down on the ground. You keep it above the ground. So up and down, up and down. Last round, up and down. Now roll the lower half of the leg around. Do it three times in one direction. Now let's do three times in the counterclockwise direction. And hold the knee still and just move the foot around. So working on the ankle joint, ankle rotation. Do it in the opposite direction. Yes, very nice. And you know, this is how you're addressing the major joint, your pelvic joint, your knee joint, and your ankle joint. Relax, lay your leg down, shave it off, catch your breath. Now we need to do the same thing with the other side. So fold it. Hold it and lift it up and down, up and down. Last round. And then roll it around the lower half of the leg. Very nice. And then do it in the opposite direction. It feels great when you do this. And hold the knee still and just work on the ankle rotation. So just roll the foot around. Very nice. Yes, I see Charlotte, I see Jim, I see Irene, and relax. I see Rachel. Okay, shake it off. Very nice. And now, you're going to fold your right leg, cross it over your left thigh. So, this is how you're doing it. Crossing it over. And take the fingers of your left hand, put them in between the toes of your right foot and shake, shake, shake. Very gently, shake it and again, roll it around. So, you know, your fingers are like the, the toe spreaders. You're putting your fingers in between your toes and then rolling your foot around. It's a supported movement for your foot. Feels great. Now do it in the opposite direction. Keep your spine straight. And relax. Now with both your hands, tap, tap, tap all over. Then press your toes, your big toe, your little toes. Counting your toes, making sure all your toes are there. Slowly pressing the balls of the foot, the arch of the foot, the heel. 
Then make a yogic fist and use your knuckles to slide them all over the sole of your foot with your knuckles. Very nice. Stimulating blood circulation. And then tap, tap, tap gently. Great job. Okay, now you're going to lift your folded leg and rock it side to side. Like you're rocking a baby. Very gently, it's a side movement for your pelvic joint. You're just moving it side to side and relax. Bring it down and then breathe in. Bring the knee towards the chest and breathe out away from the chest towards the ground. Very nice. So in and out. And for those of you who have been practicing it for a while and you can even do it with your leg crossed over your thigh and go all the way in and out, you can do it that way. That's your target, you'll be able to do it. And then you don't even have to hold it. You will notice that even without holding it, your knee goes up and down. But all in stages and relax. Straighten your leg, come back to start position, catch your breath. Dandasan, these are called Dandasan. So this is Sukshma Vyayam, light exercises. Now we do the same thing with the other leg. So you're going to cross it over and take the fingers of your right hand, put them in between the toes of your left foot and slowly shake your foot, shake, shake, shake. It feels great. You have happy feet. Now roll it around in one direction and then roll it in the opposite direction. And remove your fingers. And now with both your hands, tap, tap, tap gently, your foot, and then press your kneecap, I mean, not your kneecaps, your toes. Big toe, little toes, and the ball of the foot, the arch of the foot, the heel of the foot. And then make a yogic fist and use your knuckles to slide them all over the sole of the foot. And then tap, tap, tap gently with your knuckles all over your foot. It feels great when you do that. And then lift your folded leg and gently rock it side to side. Very good. And relax. And then bring it down. And now breathe in, move the knee towards the chest and breathe out, away from the chest towards the ground. So just do it as per your comfort level. Do not wrestle with your knee. So let's say if you, I'm trying to bring my knee down and it goes only up to here, then stay up to this, stay there. Don't try to wrestle it to bring it down, okay? With time, before you know, your knee will go all the way down. There's a saying in India where we say that, you know, when you plant a seed, you can pour 100 buckets of water, but the seed will sprout in its own time. You can't speed up the sprouting of the seed. It will take its own time. So it's a very famous, uh, uh, famous lines of a famous poet, Kabir. And relax. So stretch your leg, shake it off, catch your breath. Very good. And now you're going to fold both your legs and bringing the soles of your feet together, you're going to do Titali Asana or Bhadrakon Asana. So interlacing the fingers, you're going to put your hands under your feet and then flap your knees up and down like the wings of a butterfly. That's why it's called Butterfly Asana or Titali Asana or Bhadrakon Asana. And you can feel the stretch when you're doing it. You can feel it on your inner thighs and your pelvic joint as you do that. Now, again, initially, if you haven't been doing because there's tightness of muscles, you will notice that your knees are up here. And that's okay. You just stay there. Then with time, they will begin to relax and go all the way down. That even if you try to slide a sheet of paper here, you can't slide because your calves your shins are touching the ground, so you won't be able to do that. But it's all in, in time. The seed will sprout. It's just a matter of time. We just need to make sure we continue to water the seed, continue to provide the sunshine to the seed, right? The seed will sprout. And that's what we are doing right now is, you know, providing nourishment and taking care of the body. 
So now just relax. We are finished with the joints on the lower half of the body. Now we need to bring attention to the joints in the upper half. So stretch your arms in front of you, keeping your spine straight. Yes, very good. We are, I can see all of, yes, great job. So stretching it all the way as if you're just trying to reach, that's just a little beyond your reach. And I think, yeah, I can see maybe that step me there. So stretch it all the way. Yeah, okay, it is hers, she's waiting. All right, and then spread your fingers wide open and then make a yogic fist with your thumb inside. Then again, open and close. Then stretch, straighten your hands and lift them up, straight down. So this is what is called flexion and extension. And then alternate them. Yes, very nice. And then flip your hands up, make a yogic fist and roll your fists around, just working on the wrist joint. And then do it in the opposite direction. Yes, very nice. Open your hands and touch your shoulder. Open and fold. Open and fold. Do it sideways. Open and fold. Very good. And fold. Drop your elbows down and roll them around. Breathe in as the elbows go back and breathe out when they move to front. So just take your time. And when they come to front, you will notice initially that the elbows don't touch. But with practice, they will touch each other when you bring them to the front. Last round in this direction. And then we'll do counterclockwise. Very good. So breathe in as the Elbows go back and breathe out to front. Yes, last round. And relax. Shake it, catch your breath. Very good. And now we're going to lift both our hands up. Feel that full stretch when you're lifting your hands up. Yeah, feel the stretch. And now you can try to hold the two hands to, together and then bend it to one side. But try not to rest your arm on your head. Keep it behind your head and bring it to the center and then bend it to the other side. Feel that stretch. It feels great when you do it. And bring it to the center and drop your hands down. Shake it, catch your breath. So we have done very well with the joints and ligaments and the muscles in our body. Now we need to bring our attention to the big joint left. That is our neck joint. So for that, we do Brahma Mudra. Brahma Mudra is a powerful mudra and you always do it while sitting down and try to do it with your eyes closed. So keep your spine upright and straight. Hands in Gyan Mudra position or Chin Mudra position. So what is that mudra? That is the index fingertip joined with your thumb tip. The rest of the fingers are straight. And this position, they are resting on your lap, keeping your spine straight, breathe in. And as you breathe out, drop your chin down. So you are bending your head. Your chin is sitting on the center of your collarbone, also called sternum. Feel the stretch on the back of your neck. Then slowly lift your chin up and gently drop your head back. Feel the stretch on the front part of your neck. And then bring your head to the center and tilt your head to the right. So you're bending it to the side. So the right ear is close to right shoulder. Feel the stretch on the left side of your neck. And bring your head to the center. And then now tilt it to the left side. Feel the stretch on the right side of your neck. Your left ear is closer to your left shoulder. And bring your head to the center and turn your head to the right. So now your Chin is parallel to your right shoulder. And bring your head to the center and then turn it to the other side. So now your chin is parallel to your left shoulder. And bring your head to the center, then drop it down. And very slowly and mindfully, we are going to roll our head around two times in one direction and two times in the counterclockwise direction. But do it very slowly and mindfully. And at any point, if it hurts or pains, you have gone too far. You need to cut back.
and you never do this while standing up because it can bring an altered sense of consciousness when you're doing it because there are major nerves and arteries going through the neck. And when you finish your round, you can relax. Very good. And it feels great after this Brahma Mudra. So now we are ready to do the asanas uh, for our GI system, which is our gastrointestinal and digestive system, as well as for our vertebral column. So we are going to start with the Noka asana, board pose. So stretch your leg in front of you and spread and stretch your arms. So you're sitting like a teddy bear, like this. So once you are ready, then you're going to slowly lean back and lift your one leg up, bring it down, lift your other leg up, about 10 inches above the ground, bring it down, and then if you can lift both your legs up, you can do that, holding your belly in, so that your head, hands, and feet are all aligned at the same level. So this is the bodhasana, your body is hinged on your hips. Five, four, three, Two, one, and relax. You can lie down now on your back, and we are ready to do the supine position postures. And these are here to keep our digestive system healthy, our gastrointestinal system healthy, and it's very helpful for any problems with acid reflux, flatulence, or problems with constipation or digestion. All right, so what we are doing here, we are going to first fold both our legs and we'll do power mokdasan. So folding your legs, bringing your heels close to your hips. You're going to lift your folded legs and wrap your arms tightly around your folded legs. So hold them tightly against your body, hold it. Feel the pressure in your lower belly as you're holding them tightly. Now, if you don't have any cervical problems or back issues, you can lift your head. And it's like you're trying to bring your head towards your knees. So you're all curled up like a ball. You can feel the pressure on your belly. And you can gently rock your body side to side, right to left, left to right, just very gentle rock to work on your paraspinal muscles. You can even go front and back a little bit. And relax, let go of your legs and come back to start position. So this is our base position. Your toes are pointing towards the ceiling. Both your arms are next to the body with the palms facing down. Next, we will do the uh, Dwi Chakri Kasin, where we are going to be doing like doing the bicycle pose. So but before that, slide your right hand and your left hand under your right hip and your left hip. And then you are ready for it. You're going to bend your legs, bringing your feet close to your hips. And then you're going to lift your legs and pretend you're riding this imaginary bicycle. So you are pedaling. But do it very slowly and mindfully. Don't be in a rush. You're not uh, trying to get to another location. You're just sitting here slowly and mindfully doing this Dui Chakri Gasan, bicycling pose. And then do it in the, top, in the reverse direction. It's like in the reverse gear. So do it slowly and feel the full stretch of your leg when you're doing it. Yes. Last round. And relax. You should be very thankful that you're able to do it. Because I remember one time when I had a meniscus tear in my knee, I was not able to do this. So even just a tiny ligament tear can cause a lot of major problems. You will do not come back to start position, but keep your hands under your hips. Let's do the leg, uh, leg rotation also. It's called Padvita Karasana. We will do it with both legs, but you can do it with one leg if uh, you're just starting. So what we're going to do, breathe in, and then you're going to lift your legs up and roll them around in a big circle, like you're trying to draw this imaginary circle in the air. And you can feel the pressure as you do this. 
So we do about three rounds in one direction, and then you do three rounds in the counterclockwise direction. So initially, you will notice that your knees are bent. Slowly, you'll be able to do it with your knees straight. And then come back. Keep your, keep your hands under your hips. Let's do the other posture also we will do. The one uh, with 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees angle. Breathe in. Lift your legs at 30 degrees angle and hold it. Then lift them further up at 60 degrees angle, hold it. Then lift it at 90 degrees angle, perpendicular to the body and hold it. Then come back to 60 degrees, hold it. Come back to 30 degrees and hold it. And bring it down. Remove your hands from under your hips. And catch your breath. Come back to start position. Now we need to do we have two things that we haven't uh, done here in this prone, uh, in supine position. It's the spinal twist and inversion. So in every routine, we make sure that we include all the different kinds of range of motion, whether it's forward bend, back bend, spinal twist, lateral bend, or it is, you know, pronation or your um, extension or flexion or rotation. So here you're going to spread your arms at the shoulder level with your palms facing up. Then you're going to fold both your legs, bringing the heels close to your hips. Breathe in, and as you breathe out, you're going to drop your knees to the right and turn your head to the left. So now your right knee is on the ground, your left knee sitting on top of your right knee, your left foot is sitting on top of your right foot. Your head is turned in the opposite direction away from the knees and hold it. You can feel that uh, spinal twist on your lower back. It helps in alleviating any back problems also. Keeps your spine flexible and strong. And then bring your knees to the center. Bring your head to the center. We do the same thing on the other side. So breathe in. And as you breathe out, you're going to drop your knees to the left and turn your head to the right. So now your left leg is on the ground. Your right knee sitting on top of your left knee. Your right foot is sitting on top of your left foot. Your head is turned in the opposite direction, away from the knees. Hold it here. You can feel the, the, the spinal twist now on the right side and your lower back. And relax. Come back to start position. Catch your breath. And now we are ready to do the last posture in this position. That is for the... Say to Bandhasan, bridge pose. This is an inversion. So if you have cardiovascular problems or if you have uh, high blood pressure, uh, do it uh, at, as per your body or you can skip it. So you're going to fold your legs, bringing your feet close to your hips. And you're going to press the mat with your hands and your elbows while lifting your hips up. So you're going to form a bridge with your body. Breathe in. And as you breathe out, lift your body up. So you're lifting your pelvic floor up, forming a bridge. And hold your hips tight. Feel the tightness. So holding the glutes tightly. And relax. Bring your hips down. Come back to start position. You can even slowly turn to your right side. And you can rest your head on your, on your elbow. So your right hand is bent and you're resting your head on your right hand. And you can put your left hand in front of the chest on the ground. And now you're going to straighten your left leg 
and then lift it up and down a few times. Keeping the leg straight, lifting it up and down. Then move it front and back. Very nice, front and back. And relax. Slowly roll over on your belly. So now we are ready to do the prone position postures. And prone position, again, um, people who have uh, had any heart issues or have high blood pressure, they may find it difficult to do. And if it is uh, difficult for them, then they can skip it and keep lying down on your spine. And, or you can do it, making sure that your breath is effortless. All right. So you're going to come back. This is your start position. Both your feet are together. Your hands are next to your ears, closer to your shoulders. Your forehead on the mat. Let's start with uh, crocodile pose, Makarasana. Keep your feet apart about the width of the yoga mat. Pressing the hands down, you're going to lift your head neck up to your uh, kind of up to your belly button. And then make a sideways cup with your hands and rest your chin on your palms. Now, initially, you will notice your elbows are apart. But slowly you can bring your elbows closer and then you can notice that your uh, curve in the back has gone extended further down when you do this. And now you're going to move your feet towards your hips alternately, moving your feet towards your hips. And then you can do it together with both your feet together towards the hips. Very relaxing. Asan, it's called Makar Asan. Relax, come back to start position. And now we will do the Bhujang Asan. So again, keep your feet about a shoulder width apart. We'll do the Cobra pose. Pressing the hands down and keep your fingers wide open. So pressing the hands down, you're going to lift your head, neck, chest up to your belly button. And if you don't have any cervical problems, you can tilt your head to look up towards the ceiling. We'll stay here. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Slowly come down to start position. Bringing your legs together. And now take your hands and put them under your respective thighs. So right hand goes under the right thigh, left hand goes under the left thigh. Breathe in and lift your legs up and you can lift your head up. So you're lifting your body at both the ends. And if you don't want to do it with two legs, you can do it with one leg at a time and then slowly you'll be able to do it with both the legs up. And relax. Now turn to your left side. So we'll do the same thing like we did earlier. So now your left side, your legs are bent. Your right leg, folded right leg is sitting on top of your folded left leg. Your right hand is in front of the chest on the ground. And now you're going to straighten your right leg and lift it up and down, up, and down a few times. And then you will do it front and back. This nice swing, swinging action. Swinging your leg front and back and then up and down and relax. And you can sit up and we will do the uh, pranayams now. So what we have done so far is taking care of the physical structure, you know, the, the, the physical aspects of the body, the various organs of the body, the muscles, the ligaments, the tissues, the joints. Now with the pranayama, we take care of our mental health, our total being, which is not just the physical being, but the social, emotional, psychological being. So for that, 
we do pranayama because you will notice any time you are angry your breath becomes heavy or it becomes um, erratic rapid any time you are upset depressed or even excited or elated your breath is um, is erratic or it's faster it's rapid so breath is an indication the, the pace of the breath is an indication of the state of mind so when the mind is totally relaxed you will notice that your breath becomes slow deep rhythmic and we have done those breathing tests here in the yoga sessions before we did like a pre test and post test where we tried to find the number of breaths we take in in a minute and we found that there is significant drop sometimes sometimes you begin the yoga session with like 35 breaths per minute and by the end of the session you are doing like 15 breaths or 10 breaths a minute so here keeping your spine upright and straight keeping your shoulders rounded back hands in yamudra position you are going to keep your eyes closed take a deep breath in and an extended breath out this is called bhastika pranayam the main element here we are working on is called prana prana is the vital life force that sustains us so today let's do it slightly differently now bring your hands at the level of your shoulders and then you will straighten your arms and lift them up so pretend there is this uh, rod that is imaginary rod hanging above your head and you will you hold the bar with both your hands and when you breathe out you are going to bring it down so bring your hands down so breathe in hands up breathe out hands down in up in out so just do it as per your breath and when you breathe out you can even breathe out forcefully last round and relax it can trigger hyperventilation so especially because we are doing with forceful exhalation next we will do <coughs> excuse me we are going to do um a what is called anulom vilom pranayam alternate nostril breathing so close the right nasal passage with your right thumb breathe in from the left close the left nostril with your middle finger and ring finger let go of your thumb breathe out from the right keep your spine straight and now keeping the left nostril closed breathe in from the right nostril close the right nostril with your thumb and let go of your fingers breathe out from the left so this is one round you can do a few rounds at your own pace now just remember that we are not holding our breath here at any point we are simply inhaling from one nostril and exhaling from the other and vice versa here the main element we are working on is called vayu vayu is one of the five elements that we are made of and vayu is also important uh, in keeping the the movement the mobility of the internal organs going like the lungs right now even though the physically the body is still but internally the the organs are working they are doing their work they are is their workout time they are always working out so your heart is contracting and expanding your lungs are contracting and expanding the blood is flowing through the circulatory system and when you finish so that is why any time the vayu is in balance then that's when you start feeling a certain um, unease and when there is unease in the body that is what we call disease so it then becomes a breeding ground for other diseases so relax so when you finish your round of uh, alternate breathing you can bring your hands down and let's do the yoga nidra now the full body relaxation so here we are doing it maybe for a minute or two but at home the target time recommended for breath uh, breath work is like 5 minutes you can do for each pranayam but uh, if 5 minutes is too long you can start with just counting you can do 20 rounds 
of alternate nostril breathing. And you can do 20 times, you can do the deep breathing. So just mentally you are counting when you are doing it. And then you can slowly work your way up, but you will see profound difference in your body, profound relaxation. You become more aware of your body. You feel good. This, uh, you know, you can just feel very, you feel very light. All right, now slowly turn to turn sideways and just relax. You're going to lie down on your back and we'll do the full body relaxation. So here, let there be distance between your feet. So your legs are apart, dropping your feet down. You're going to keep some distance between your arm and your body. So your palms are facing up. This is called the receiving mode. You're receiving the energy, the vibes from the environment, the energy from the sun and the light that is around you. And we are going to mentally scan the body. So take out, take your attention to your feet, wiggle your toes, wiggle, wiggle, move them, curl them in, and then relax your toes and push the balls of your feet outward. And you can feel the stretch in your feet and relax, let go. Press your kneecaps down, feel the tightness in both your legs. Hold it, keep holding the kneecaps down. You can feel the tightness in your quads, your hamstring, your thigh muscles. Hold it and relax, let go. Now pull your hips muscles in. So you are holding the glutes tightly and you can feel the tightness in your pelvic floor. So hold the pelvic floor tightly and relax your hips. Now slightly arch your back off the mat and then drop it down and hold the belly in. It's like your belly button is trying to reach the spine. Hold it in as if you're waiting to exhale. And relax, let go. Now raise your shoulders towards your head, towards your ears and then drop them down. Now make a tight fist, yogic fist. So you're clenching your hands into tight fists and press your hands down, pushing the elbows down, pushing the hands down, feel the tightness in both your arms. Hold it tight and relax, let go. And now turn your head side to side from right to left, left to right, and then let it wobble, let go. Scratch your facial muscles, pull them all in towards the center of the face. As if you're frowning and relax your facial muscles, raising your eyebrows towards your hairline and relax. Open your mouth wide, dropping your lower jaw down and relax. Curl your lips as if you're ready to whistle. And then stretch your lips from ear to ear, bringing a smile on your face. And now you're totally relaxed. There is no tightness, no stiffness, no tension anywhere. For any reason, if you notice in any part of your body that there is still some tightness or you feel some heaviness, take your attention to that part of the body, contract those muscles and then relax those muscles and you will let go of that tightness and the tightness will melt away. And slowly turn to your right side. And just stay here for a few seconds. It's very relaxing. And if you feel you're ready, you can sit up. And if you've gone off to sleep, that's okay. You're at your own home, so you can just lower away, sleep, doesn't matter. But here you are, so sit up, and we will end with a few minutes of just meditation time. Feel the lightness, because now you're feeling that your body is totally relaxed and there's no tightness anywhere. 
you may not even feel the heaviness of the body. You may feel like you're still just floating in the air. There's so much lightness, physical lightness as well as mental lightness. You won't feel the, the heaviness in your head that you might have been feeling when you entered the yoga session. Now there is this sense of relaxation. And stay with this sense of relaxation, just like the breath comes and goes. Notice there are sensations in the body that come and go. And they come in the form of an itching sensation, a twitching sensation, or a yawning, or you might feel like um, a cooling sensation or pressure. So whatever is the sensation, notice that the sensation comes and goes. It is a visitor. And just like the sensations come and go, feelings come and go, feelings of joy, feelings of sadness. But these are all feelings that are triggered by certain thoughts. So just like sensations come and go, feelings come and go, and the thoughts come and go. Any time that we hold on to a certain thought, then what happens is that thought leads to another thought to, and that leads to another thought. And before you know, you can wrap yourself around in this cloud of thought. It can be a cloud of pleasant thoughts. It can be a cloud of unpleasant thoughts. But they are just thoughts. Whether it is a memory from the past, even that is a form of a thought. If it's a memory of an event, that is a form of a thought. A thought has no power unless we feed it with our attention and give it power. So always remember that we are prior to our thoughts because we can observe our thoughts and we can witness our thoughts. So you have the power to know which thoughts to follow or which ones not to follow. And anytime you notice you're getting um, wrapped up in some deep dark cloud behind this deep dark bush, and that's where the thoughts have taken you to, all you have to do is to bring your attention to your breath. And as soon as you begin to pay attention to your breath, it will create a little bit of space between the thoughts and you. And it will disengage you from that chain of thoughts. But the event may be very strong and it may come back, those thoughts may come back. And that is okay. You're not fighting them. All you're doing is bringing your attention to your breath. And slowly you will notice that those thoughts begin to melt away. And it creates this space of presence, stillness, awareness that is always there as the backdrop. It's like the backdrop, like the, the clear blue sky during the day against which we see sometimes the clouds coming and going. So the clouds are the thoughts of past, we call them memories, or about future, we call them either anxiety or fear or imagination. These are all thoughts. And they have no power over you. They gain their power when we allow them to have power over us. So in this space of stillness, you will notice that you just feel very light. There is no, no tension, no competition, no, no anger, no jealousy, no hatred, no envy, no regrets. It is just this space of stillness. And this space is always there. That's our nature, that is what is called awareness. Or you can call it presence, consciousness. It just is. It is there even in the deep sleep because when we wake up, we say we had a good night's sleep. 
how do we know we had a good night's sleep? Because the person wasn't there, right? But the presence was there. And this is that presence, the awareness. And it's not an awareness of an object. It is just like, like an intransitive verb. It is just awareness. And it has no shape. It is like space. It has no shape, no boundaries. It's limitless, shapeless, formless, colorless. It just is. Slowly, we will be opening our eyes, but it doesn't matter, eyes open or eyes close. This presence is always there. As you're working through the day, actions happen, events happen, but the presence remains. Slowly bring your hands together, rub your hands, feel the warmth in your palms. And then put your hands over your face, gently massaging your facial muscles, your forehead, all over your face, around your eyes, under your eyes. And then take your hands to your scalp, do a gentle massage of your scalp with the tips of the fingers, do a gentle massage. In circle, it feels great as you do that. So till next time, Eat wisely, move smart, breathe deep, sleep well, relax, meditate, stay healthy and stay safe. So thank you. Next Sunday, we will not have this class because we will be in the yoga retreat. We are conducting the full day yoga therapy retreat and you have probably seen the flyer. It is from morning 8 till evening 4.30 p.m. So... We will uh, see you then. If not next Sunday, then we'll see you uh, um, in two weeks on the 20, not on the 21st, but the week after that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Abba.